Um, let's go to the president's State of the Union. Um, look, he's got a lot of things to tout. Why do you think that it has not penetrated the American public? Well, look, these things don't sell themselves, and it's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to that, that State of the Union address. Uh, I will say that there have been so many accomplishments under this administration, it can be difficult to list them in a distilled way. Pass the most significant uh, legislation uh, on our economy, achieving the uh, second most important health care bill since LBJ and the most important infrastructure bill. I'll just say this. There are few who do this better than Pete Buttigieg. Over the weekend, I was asked point blank why it seems that still, after the countless accomplishments this administration have achieved, why still many Americans remain almost immovable in a way. Now keep in mind, an estimated 30% of people in America get their news from this guy. White supremacy. Extremism. White supremacy. White supremacy. Phantom white supremacy threats. Where exactly is all this criminal white supremacy, this right-wing domestic terrorism that poses, quote, the most lethal terrorist threat in the homeland? Where is it? Well, it, of course, it doesn't exist. Sarah Clan Daniel and Brandon Russell were taken into custody last week. They have been described by the U.S. attorney as racially motivated. Brandon Russell, someone who is well known within the law enforcement community and avowed neo-Nazi. With plans to, quote, destroy this whole city. But anyway, regardless, here's what Pete Buttigieg had to say on that matter. Um, let's go to the president's State of the Union. Um, look, he's got a lot of things to tell. Why do you think that it has not penetrated the American public? Well, look, these things don't sell themselves, and it's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to that, that State of the Union address. Uh, I will say that there have been so many accomplishments under this administration, it can be difficult to list them in a distilled way. Recently, uh, the president hosted a send-off for Ron Klain, the departing mm -hmm. chief of staff, and he put it in a way that, that I thought was especially moving when you think back in historic terms to what it means to inherit one of the toughest situations faced by any president mm -hmm. since FDR passed the most significant uh, legislation uh, on our economy in many ways since FDR while facing the largest land war uh, in Europe since Truman, uh, achieving the uh, second most important health care bill since LBJ and the most important infrastructure bill since Eisenhower, as, as Ron put it. And that was just the beginning of the list of accomplishments. Uh, but one of the things that, that we found is that uh, you know th this is happening simultaneously with some of the toughest circumstances ever. We recognize that. And there continue to be uh, a lot of issues that America Americans are facing every day, even as we see extraordinary economic news. Uh, 500,000 jobs just created in the last month. Well, that's month. the thing. None of it seems to accrue to his benefit. Well, people say Politically. that, but then, uh, you know, this president yeah. has exceeded expectations again and again politically yeah. and functionally in terms of what we're getting done. Do you think this... And he's absolutely right, because while Fox News will do backflips to avoid admitting to these facts, despite the best efforts from the solemn voice of reason on that network... Right to you, Jessica. I mean, didn't Joe Biden go on the biggest spending spree? in American history? No, uh, Donald Trump actually spent a lot more than him. So Donald Trump is personally responsible uh, as the president for about 30% of the national debt. And I believe uh, Joe Biden's brought it down by 1.4 trillion since he's been in office. So, so COVID money no, no, went no, out. No, no. What do you mean yeah, the deficit? The, yeah. <laughs> but just let me, let me this. Speak, you, I was asked a question, I answered it. Donald Trump is responsible for more of the national debt than Joe Biden is, period, end of story. Those are what the numbers say. We also had a good jobs report today, or a good economic report. I know, Brian, you spoke about it this morning on Fox & Friends. 2.9% fourth quarter growth, 2.1% increase in consumer spending. Those are good indicators. Um, when people are talking about all the layoffs, the layoffs are in one sector, in tech. And basically, they're right-sizing the fact that they overhired in 2021, uh, 2021, sorry, and 2022. So... They're going back to the mean there. They paid people way too much, gave people big fancy titles. They couldn't afford to do that. So I, I'm not for calling everybody a MAGA Republican. I know that was part of what he was talking about today, but he does have an economic record to run on. And he does have the fact that you have um, important representatives, so much so that people thought that he could be speaker, this Kevin Hearn, who said, we have to make these, uh, we have to make uh, hard decisions about what's going on with Social Security and Medicare. And he's part of a conference of 160 conservative Republicans who have said that they want to look at changing the retirement age. That's something that Nancy Mace, for instance, uh, a Republican, has said is absolute non-starter. Non -starter. McCarthy said that as well. But get your caucus in line. If you don't want Democrats talking about the fact that there are people in your conference who are important to you, by the way, saying that we should raise the retirement age, 
people are going to pay attention to it and they're going to vote accordingly. The accomplishments and more specifically the economic accomplishments that have been made under this administration are indisputable. And ahead of tomorrow's State of the Union where undoubtedly Republicans will do everything imaginable to try and use their recent caravan tactic to deflect from the fact that they simply do nothing but try and emote outrage but offer no solution. It's one thing to call attention to a problem when you have a course of action, as, as some of the folks here speaking up about an issue, exercising their First Amendment rights have done, or in, in elected office. It's another to just call attention to a problem because the problem is actually more useful to you than the solution, and that helps you call attention to yourself. Meanwhile, D, well, as Hakeem Jeffries likes to say, democracy over demagogues, economic opportunity over extremism, freedom over fascism, governing over gaslighting, hopefulness over hatred, inclusion over isolation, justice over judicial overreach, knowledge over kangaroo courts, liberty over limitation, maturity over Mar-a-Lago, normalcy over negativity, opportunity over obstruction, people over politics, quality of life issues over QAnon, Reason over racism, substance over slander, triumph over tyranny, understanding over ugliness, voting rights over voter suppression, working families over the well-connected, xenial over xenophobia, yes we can over you can't do it, and zealous representation over zero-sum confrontation. We will always do the right thing by the American people. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.